students and quality education. Rahui Katini. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This day, the third reading of a bill which I really cannot name because it is a lie has been a long time coming. It's a day which the thinkers and not the reactors of us in this House had hoped would never happen. And I want to acknowledge the sterling efforts of the Labour and Green parties who, along with the Māori Party, have tried to prevent this bill from ever being enacted. When the bill last came before the House on 7 September, my colleague Te Uruo Flavel sought the leave of the House that this bill be referred in its entirety to the Waitangi Tribunal under Section 8 of the Treaty of Waitangi Act 1975. This was an action taken up after the intervention of Te Mana Akono, the National Association of Māori Students. Te Mana Akono sought to take the claim to the uh, Waitangi Tribunal on the basis that it would weaken the representation of Māori students. It was an action, unfortunately, that did not receive the full support of the House, but nevertheless the concerns we had, and have had right since the outset of this bill, bear repeating for the record. But I want to do that by letting the student voices prevail. For we believe we are here in Parliament to be the very best advocates for the people that we can, and it is only right, therefore, that the voices of those most affected should be ringing in the ears of every member of this House as we consider actions which impact on the student body. And I would remind the House that there were 4,837 submissions received on this bill. Of those, 4,418 were submissions from students who opposed this bill. Not long after Mr Flavel attempted to refer this bill to the Waitangi Tribunal, he received an email which provides an interesting insight into the issues around student associations and their fate under this bill. That email stated, and I quote, as a past student of the University of Otago and a past tumuaki of Te Ropu Māori, Māori Student Association at Otago University, I would like to express my thanks to you and the party for attempting to suspend the progress of this bill. I also wish to express my utmost support for student associations, in particular Māori student associations, these ropu are vital for students to survive at their chosen university, particularly Otago. Most Māori students enrolled at Otago University are from the North Island. Te ropu Māori offered me a place to call home because of the tikanga values they upheld that no other student service department or lecturer could provide. These being whanaunatanga, manaakitanga, aroha, Tahawairua and many more. It was a place I could go to when I felt I had nowhere else to turn where people can relate to how I was feeling or the challenges I was facing. End quote. Mr Speaker, I would imagine that most members around this House would share a similar view to the Māori Party that education is a front end investment in our future. What this student is reflecting about Te Ropu Māori is in itself a very positive reflection of the value of student associations in supporting and encouraging Māori students in progressing in tertiary education. What I found most illuminating from the submissions was how consistent the messages were about the value of student associations. I was interested in listening to Heather Roy's opening remarks in this third reading when she talked about the importance of the freedom of rights for students. And I recall the very first speech I made on this bill so many months ago when I thought it was with some irony that we are faced with a bill called the Education Freedom of Association Amendment Bill that seeks to erode student associations but places the word freedom in its title. Student rights, as the submissions tell us, are best represented by students themselves in the student associations they have formed. And so I return to Otago University to the present day to the submission they presented to the Education and Science Select Committee and they said, we oppose this bill 
because it will exterminate the services that we provide for the Māori students at the University of Otago. It will diminish kaupapa Māori and tikanga Māori that te ropu Māori provide for students, for example, a whānau on campus, whakawhanaungatanga, aroha, wairua and manaki that are valued by Māori students. Mr Speaker, the heart breaks when we read these submissions. This bill attacks those who are forming the very foundation of our future. It robs our rangatahi of the vital support that they have seen as of such value in assisting them to undertake university studies. What is most infuriating about this whole legislative travesty is that actually the current legislative framework is both flexible and inclusive, allowing for both voluntary and universal membership of students' associations. The legislation already has the potential for what Mrs Roy wants to happen. So why are we going to so much bother to pass this bill? Why does ACT hope, what does ACT hope to achieve by making student associations voluntary? More to the point, what will enacting this bill do to the confidence and the optimism of our student body? That Parliament is there to protect and support their interests along with any other taxpayer. What will Te Ropu Whai Pūtaki, Otago University Māori Law Students Association, think? This is the group that described this bill as attacking the Māori student voice and their ability to have democratically elected collective organisations on campus by removing the existing rights of students to self-determination. How will Mrs Roy account back to Te Mana Mātauranga o Te Waiariki, who have advised the House, I quote, we believe that this bill is unnecessary as the status quo works. And how can Parliament address the concerns of Ngā Tauira Māori, Auckland University Māori Students Association, who explain the case very clearly indeed. The bill adversely affects the ability of Ngā Tauira Māori to ex exercise tino rangatiratanga, kaitiakitanga and maakitanga of which are guaranteed in Te Tiriti or Waitangi. It is not only those who are representing the associations of students who are vehemently um, opposed. I recall the words of John Kingy, welfare officer at AUSA, who said, oftentimes we are forced to turn away students who may require some assistance, as we simply do not have the capacity that universal associations do to meet the demands of students. Mr Speaker, Māori students comprise a minority of university students, only 7% overall. These Māori students need to be introduced into the tertiary environment as a welcoming and safe space. Māori student associations assist in this by holding first-year support hui or wānanga with active mentoring and academic support programmes. And I am reminded of the submission from Te Mana Akuna, which told this House that the proud history of Māori Ropu and student associations has ensured Māori students have an outlet to speak their mind through the through freedom of speech, the freedom of autonomy and academic freedom. As a representative body for Māori students, they believe that this bill does not support Māori students but increases the likeliness of Māori student failure due to the support structures not being present. I am greatly saddened today that this bill has come to this House and that Māori students, indeed all students, will be fully aware now that there are some parties who do not see the value of supporting the right potential of our upcoming generations. And I leave the last word to another submission from within my own electorate from Ngai Tawira, Victoria University. It is our belief that until Māori become a normal feature of the tertiary environment, then Māori student associations will be necessary to ensure equity and support of our students in the tertiary environment. The Māori Party votes to oppose this bill with all of our might.